Hey, I'm Peachy. You could call me Mr. Goldfinger, the man with a Midas touch. A spider's touch. Such a cold finger. Welcome to the painting phase. So custodias are quite elite armies. Not many models in the collection, so pretty quick to paint. Well, I say quick to paint. A lot of people like to spend time on the custodias because obviously there's only a few of them. However, in this video, we're gonna teach you some hacks to get them on the tabletop ASAP. Basically, it means if you're not in the mood for spending hours on painting gold miniatures, you can get a kill team in a night or an army over a weekend. However, if you do wanna take them to the next step, we do have some steps that you can add just to add a little bit more punch and a few highlights to them. So let's paint Daddy Emps some extra bodyguards. Now, as always, I'm gonna undercoat the model using a spray can. In this instance, I'll be using Retributor Armor just to speed things along. Now, if you don't have Retributor Armor, any undercoat will do, just base coat it by hand with Retributor Armor. Or if you've got an airbrush, use one of those. First up is an all over coat of Riken Flesh Shade. Don't be too concerned about getting this over other details as we'll be painting over those in good time. However, sometimes when you use metallic undercoats, when you start applying those base coats, they do separate away a bit. So applying this shade over will help just give your base coat something to stick to as well. So here I am just applying it all over the roving cloak, even though I'm gonna paint over that. Now with the shade fully dry, we're now gonna do a gentle dry brush of Stormhost Silver. This is just gonna really help make those details of the gold pop out. Just take your time and build those layers up. You're not always gonna get the best highlight on the first pass, just work on it a couple of times. With our gold pretty much done, what we're now gonna do is move on to Black Legion. This is gonna pick out any black details, such as the joins in the armor and also the bits on the weapons. Don't worry if you get this on the gold armor, we can just retouch that back up with Retributor armor if we need to. Now we're gonna apply Iron Hand Steel to all the silver sections. In some places, you might wanna add a second coat, such as the weapon. For our red robes, cloak and plume, I'm going to be using Mephiston Red for a nice rich scarlet tone. Again, it might need a few thin coats for full coverage. And also when working around the back of that cloak, just thin it down ever so slightly and just work in there. Don't worry if you can't cover all of it because, well, if you can't see it, no one's going to know, right? For the gauntlets and other reddish brown leather details, I'm going to be applying Word Bearers Red. Now we're gonna prepare the gems and guardian spear of a base coat of Corax White. Honestly, any white will do the job. I just like using Corax White. Especially when Pat mixes it and makes it nice and smooth. Now we're gonna move on to adding some definition. And first of all, we're gonna add some depth to the red. We're now applying Reichland Flesh Shade to the red. Once dry, you can always add a second coat, but concentrate that into the deeper recesses. Using Basilicon and Grey from the pot, I'm gonna apply this to the plume the interior of the cloak, the silvers, the leather, and the white tassel. One coat should be enough, but in some places you might want to add a second coat to add extra depth. For the blades and gems, we shall add a tone of blue. I'm using Frost Art here for the gems. A single coat for the pot would do nicely. For the Guardian Spear, I shall start with a thin coat, so that's 50-50 of Frost Art with water, and then apply a slightly neater coat deeper into the blade. Finally, we shall add a darker tone of blue to the blades and gems. So this I'm using storm feed on those details. This will help you give more depth to the blade and running a little around the gems will help them pop out a little bit more as well. So there we are, our model is pretty much painted to be used on the tabletop. So all we're gonna do now is base it. Now I'm gonna be using Astro Granite here, so that gray tone is gonna really work nicely and add some contrast between the gold and the red. If I was to use like a desert tone, like sand or something like that, it might clash with the yellow a bit more. I say yellow, obviously the gold is kind of a yellowy tone. However, if you've got your own collections, like your Imperium collections, and you're just adding these guys to that, base them to match him with that. Don't worry about, obviously, contrast. You want them to play games with them, you want them on the tabletop, you want them to match your army. Do that, ignore this. 
So starting with Astro Granite, I'm applying this all over the base. As I get nearer the details like the feet, I like to add a little bit of water as this makes it a little bit runny. It also means it's more workable around those details. So less splodges that way. I'm now applying a thin down coat of Astro Granite to the boots and the robes. I'd recommend using an old brush for this. And in some places you can just stab with a brush to give a nice splatter effect. Now that our texture's thoroughly dry, I'm now gonna coat over with Reichland Flesh Shade. I'll also be applying this to the dirty boots and robes too. And last up for the base, I'm going to apply three thin coats of Steel Legion Drab to the rim. This will give it a nice smooth finish. With our base dry, our striking and quick color scheme for our Custodian Warden is finished. And you can literally start playing games with your models as is. In fact, you don't even need to do anything more of them, just leave them as it is. Play Kill Team, play 40K, do Necromunda with them. Well, annoy your mates that's for sure well i hope you're enjoying this video and if you are don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons down here i'll get it right one of these days but it is down here i know there's a thumb up don't do the thumb down please don't do the thumb down because i go like this also don't forget if you are enjoying this video to hit that like and subscribe button as well because that just really helps the channel now if you want to add some extra details to your custodian warden stay tuned because i'm going to do some highlighting mm. Now we're gonna add an extra layer of richness to the gold. And what we're gonna be doing here is getting auric armor gold and thinning it down, almost like to a glazed consistency. Now what you'll find is there's more pearlescent details or flecks inside of that paint. So it's gonna really help catch the light and make that gold pop. Now I'm not gonna do it on every section, so like the eagles on the greaves and across the chest, we're gonna leave those because that'll give it a slightly different finish. On the robes and cloaks, we're now gonna pick out the folds of cloth with Wild Rider Red. You can approach this in two ways. An edge highlight, this method is slower but yields better results. Or if you wanted to, you can always dry brush. It's quicker, but there'll be a lot more tidying up to do. And it's slightly rougher as well. I'll leave the choice to you. And as you can see here, I've chosen to go down the edge highlight option just because I know it'll be neater and there'll be less tidying up to do. And on the plume, we're gonna highlight that with a dry brush and Mephiston Red. Again, it's just helping that red pop out, giving a slightly different finish to the robes. So it's a slightly darker crimson, as opposed to that nice scarlet on the robes. Now, before we move on to our next step, which is to use Corax White, you'll probably find you've got some red flecks in your bristles. Now, you can spend ages washing it, as I do, and most of us do, but it's still there. And when you go into using white, you'll find out you get a nice pinky tone. Now, a top tip here, or a little hack, is give it a wash, and then get yourself some black, whether that's like Black Legion, Abaddon Black, and just dip that into the brush, give it a wash off, and before you know it, that black has just completely removed any red pigment. And the worst you're gonna get is a slightly gray instead of a pink. Using Corax White, we're gonna tie up the white rope on the guardian spear. As you can see here, I'm just highlighting those raised sections on that rope. And next, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to that white and add some crackling light effects on the blade. Starting first, I'm gonna use the edge of my brush and run down the edge of the blade. And then I'm just gonna start doing well, for a better word, some little wiggly lightning crackles just going in. Again, I'm doing this quite thin. You can always thicken them up if you want to. Also, where those lightning effects hit the edges of the blade, I'm just gonna have a little dot here and there so it looks like the energy is building up. Also, while still using Corax White, we're just gonna add some dots to those gems as well. Just a little here and there, you don't have to go too mad. Now what we're gonna do is knock that white back on the Guardian Spear by applying a glaze of frost tart. So we're thinning this down 50-50, so that's one part frost tart, one part water. And we're just gonna layer that across, and what we will find as it dries, it just turns it from being a stark white to a slightly bluer tone of white. So it's just not so harsh on the eyes. So you may notice I'm in a different jumper and a slightly different haircut, as in like one day's extra growth, maybe two. Can't quite tell, can't quite remember. It's because, I forgot something. I forgot to say a thing. I did a thing and I forgot to say it. So, what I'm gonna mention here in my new top is on the Custodes, we started doing some highlighting with a Stormpost Silver. We concentrated this on the Guardian Spear, so all the silver details on the Guardian Spear, as you can see, we're just picking those out, some of the working parts, and also the edges of the blade as well. And there we are, those highlights done. Your Empress Guardians are finished. Now, if you're short on time or just can't be bothered, then just keep it to things like your Shield Captains and Trajan Valorus, again, 
These are just extra steps if you find the time or if you just want to push yourself a little bit more. Now, if you want to follow along on this paint guide, we have a list of paints in the description. There's also a whole bunch of links in the description as well. Now, everything we've used in this video can be bought from Element Games. So just check out our affiliate link in the description. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help to support our channel. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe the video as that really helps support us as well. And we also have a Patreon. Also, don't forget to check our Patreon and supporters on there as that helps to keep the lights on, keeps us hydrated with tea, and also there's lots of other cool benefits you can get by supporting us. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a lot from it as well, whether that's just a few hacks here and there or just getting those custodians on the tabletop as quickly as possible. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Toodle pip, love you all, bye bye.